Hello my friends, it's Tom, your friend and host with Weapons Education and we are going to speak about the 40 caliber in particular in this video. Is that caliber dead? What happened to it? Oh, oh it's not dead, that's for sure. And it can sure cause some deadly damage. We're going to talk about that. The 40 caliber is an awesome round. And I want to bring it to your attention because the 9mm seems like it, it like just took over the industry in the last five years. What's that all about? I've been making videos now over 11 years. The 40 caliber when I started my channel was super huge. And then all of a sudden now it's all the 9mm. Before we get into particulars and watch the whole video, because especially if you're a new gun owner and you're deciding on what gun to buy, this is going to help you choose between a 9 and a 40. You know, as, as we, generally speaking, going up the scale, generally speaking, we got the 380, which is a shortened 9 millimeter. Then we have the 9 millimeter. Then we have the 40, which is a shortened 10 millimeter. Then we have the 10 millimeter for semi autos, generally speaking. Okay, now, well, why did everything go towards 9 millimeter? Because the 40 caliber has so much energy, it takes a quality gun for the chamber and the whole gun it itself to last. So as a whole, the industry said, you know, let's just all push the 9. This is my opinion. Not that the 9 is bad. I've got more 9s in my collection than probably any other caliber. 9s and 10s. I got a lot of, a lot of 9 millimeters. And I'm going to talk to you about why you may want to make a decision to get a 40 instead of a 9. And I'm going to reiterate, I love the 9mm. I've got a high percentage of my collection is a 9mm. Awesome round, of course. Of course. But we need to know the ballistic difference, right? And why is, is all of a sudden people just buying 9s and not 40s? And like I said, the reason is the 40 caliber has so much energy that it takes a high quality gun. So, with that said, a high quality gun to withstand the pressures and give you thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds through the barrel, through the chamber, and that gun to withstand these, these high pressures of the 40 caliber, all that energy. And we're gonna talk about ballistics here in this video. So if you wanna learn, hang in there. Now I'm gonna show you a bad example the worst 40 caliber, uh, and I would never carry, and I'm not knocking the company, I'm just saying I wouldn't carry this Taurus Slim. My friend Josh is here. Josh, please zoom in on this. And um, this is brand new. I only shot it a few times for a video way back. And uh, it's, it's a cool gun, great gun. Uh, and I th at the time I said, well, might as well get the 40 instead of the 9. And then I realized, well, well, it's a 40 is a big, bigger punch. It's, it's got way more energy. And we're going to talk ballistics. I'm going to show you proof on, on an Excel spreadsheet here in a moment. So I would not put a lot of rounds through a low-cost gun. That's why people say 40 calibers are really not that great. The reason why they're saying it is because the guns can't handle the pressure. And the industry is like... They just want everyone to have a 9 because every gun can kind of take a 9. The energy is 25% is less, 20 to 25% less, generally speaking. And uh, we're going to talk about energy here in a moment. But imagine um, a, a steel ball hitting your foot from 4 feet. Boop! Does it hurt? No, not really. But a bowling ball from 4 feet. Boop! Yeah, it's got a lot more energy. It smashes your foot. That's kind of, it's like a bigger punch. The more energy the more punch that bullet has. And then the other part of the equation is, with calibers, ballistics, is speed, feet per second. The faster the bullet, the more damage it does to tissue, right? And then we have to put those things together, and there's a lot of things that change with ballistics. We get speed and we have energy as the two most important. Now, here's, here's another gun here. Let's talk about this one here. Now this is a good gun. This can handle the 40 caliber. This is a car PM40. It's a pricey gun. Pricey gun. It's a double action only trigger 
kind of turns me off about this gun, but it's great for gals. It's great for anybody who doesn't want to have a negligent discharge. Uh, this trigger is kind of hard to pull no matter when you pull it. It's always double action. I like, you know, triggers like a 320 or an HK we're about to look at here in a moment. But the car is a quality gun. See, there's all these different things you got to look at when you buy a gun. Is the gun quality enough for the caliber I'm choosing? And that's what I'm saying with a 40 caliber, we're focusing on the 40, which is a shortened 10 millimeter, which is a powerful round. Can your gun handle the pressure? So yes, the car can do it. And um, here I got three to prove. I haven't shown you the, these guns, I don't think. Uh, this is an HK P2000 SK 40 caliber. And they can come in many, many variants. And here's one here. I'm not going to do gun reviews now. I'm just saying the HK, of course, yes, can handle the pressure. Thousands and thousands, tens of thousands rounds of 40 caliber, and your gun's still going to be perfect. And it can handle the 40 caliber. So if you're going to get an HK, and you're thinking, maybe make sure I get 9, or should I get 40? Well, get the 40. It's, I'm going to prove to you that it's got more energy. They're both fast, but they can also push the 40 calibers can push a heavier projectile, more grains, at the same speed. So we got speed, that's important, feet per second. We got the weight of the projectile, the, the grains, the weight. And we got the energy, the energy. Think of that bowling ball falling on your feet. I, I call it the smashing in the, someone smacks you in the face, or, or someone, you know, uh, Mike Tyson whacks you in the face. He's got a lot more energy. Just a silly analogy, but here's another HK P2000, a different variant. You notice this one's got the this one's got the hammer and on the inside there. And this one's got the hammer on the outside. I'm not going to get into all the differences now. But two different variants. That's how much I love the HKs. Here's another HK. This is the uh, USP Compact. 40 caliber, 40, 40, 40. And the focus of this video is to tell you the 40 caliber is awesome. Don't forget about it. Don't forget about it. I'm going to show you some ballistic charts right now. Before I do that, i got to show you a piece of leather I just designed. This goes on a shoulder holster here. So imagine if you're a lefty, you got your 500 Magnum or any gun. Any gun. This is for revolvers, but any gun. Look at the quality. And then you put the... Uh, you put these speed loaders, this is for a 500, and look at these 700 grain, <laughs> zoom in on that Josh, so zoom in there, 700 grain speed loader, okay, and for those of you who don't know what a speed loader is, it goes in and you turn it and, and your ammo plops into the, into the gun, and these are monster, monster 500 mags, so 700 grains is what I carry in my 500 magnum, and these speed loaders go in this speed loader pouch, which is my Leather Factory Weapons Education Holsters. Weapons Education Holsters.com. Please, the website's right below. Please shop, check out the uh, shoulder holsters and, and these new, these new uh, speed loader pouches that go, right, that go right here, pointing towards your belly button. And you got your revolver here, and these, these hunters, and you guys who want to carry big caliber revolvers, is why I designed this. But I'm just getting off track here to show you my leather because I'm excited. This is the first unveiling of it. The inside's all lined, double leather, all super ends, high stitching, high end brass. It's uh, high end everything, it's off the scale. That'll last a lifetime and your beneficiaries, not like other companies. Uh -huh. So the 40 caliber, let's look at the ballistics and compare it. Now I, want, I know you ballistics guys are gonna jump in on this. And you're going to say, well, the 9mm is better than the 40. And some of you might say the 40 is better than the 9mm. It really doesn't matter to me. I tell you, I don't even want to get hit with a BB gun. or I don't even, I don't even want to get hit with a kid throwing a baseball or by accident and hit me. <laughs> I, don't want to, I don't want to get any boo-boos. <laughs> I don't want to get hurt. But I'll tell you right now, the 40 caliber has a lot more energy. And I'm going to prove it to you right now with a spreadsheet that I spent a lot of time on to prove to you how a little bit about how ballistics work. Let's look at that right now.
We're looking at a ballistics chart right now from Hornady's website, which is obviously too small for us to look at the numbers and talk about. So I, I put it on an Excel spreadsheet, and we're going to zoom in real close here in a moment. But I want to tell you the type of ammo we're talking about here. And um, with the 9mm, it's going to be the 135 grain flexed, flex lock, 9mm Hornady, and also the 155 grain XTP. 40 caliber. With that said, my wife carries a, a Glock 27 and so you want a gun as good as a Glock or better. That's a good way to say it. A good as a Glock or better. So, you know, Walther is a great gun. The PPQs, the, um, the SIG, of course, any 320, the 320 40 caliber would be perfect. Uh, FN, HK, all that stuff is good for a 40 caliber. But when you get into the cheap two, three, four, even four hundred dollar guns, you know, watch out for the 40 caliber. It's just got too much energy, which we're going to speak about here in that chamber. And that's what's going to intrigue you to possibly get a 40 caliber. That's what I'm trying to motivate you to do is don't always overlook the 40. Let's look at some ballistics right now. Okay, in this final segment, I'd like to talk to you about ballistics. We're going to compare a 9mm plus P, the most powerful 9mm made these days, and this is the Horner D 135 grain flex lock round out of a 4 inch barrel, and then we're going to compare it to the 40 caliber higher grain, heavier weight by 20 grains, 155 grain 4 inch barrel. Now before I go any further, I want to explain to you, because we know what feet per second is, how fast that bullet is going per second, right? Most of us know that, and for you new people, that's what FPS is. But energy, it gets into physics. And to keep it simple, in a theatrical sense, kinetic energy as measured in foot-pounds is, is linear, which means that a bullet, or any object, with 400 pounds of kinetic energy has the ability to do twice as much work as one with 200 pounds. Hence, more energy, the better. The more your bullet's going to perform. Many other factors come into play, of course, including bullet size, shape, and construction. So now we got, let's, cause let's go from left to right now again. We got the 9mm plus P, the most powerful 9mm made, Hornady, very reputable company. Now it's a smaller 135 grain compared to the 155 grain 40. So the, the heavier the bullet, generally speaking, the, the harder it is to push. Well, not generally, it is. It's harder to push, faster. So out of a 4 inch barrel, now the speed, velocity, the 9 is going at 11.10 feet per second. And the 40 is going faster. And even though it's pushing up more weight, 20 grains more, it's going at 11.80 feet per second. So right there alone, you've got a more vicious round, I'll call it. Now at 50 yards out, at 50 yards out, Let's look at the feet per second. The 9 millimeter is going to go 1,038 feet per second, which is buzzing pretty fast, very fast, for the smaller 135 grain. And you get the heavier one, and that's going at 1,060, more than the 1,038. So the heavier 155, even at 50 yards, is still going faster. But most importantly, as we move here to the right, is the energy. And out of the muzzle, right at the tip of that gun, you got the 9mm at the top here at 369, it's called foot-pounds, as I explained earlier, and 369, which is, which is pretty powerful, that 9mm out of the muzzle. But look at the 40. It's 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 a hundred more, 110 more exactly out of Hornady's rounds. 479 out of the muzzle. 
Now let's go out to 50 yards. Let's see which round does better, the 9 or the 40. Well, at 50 yards, the 9 is going at 323, a lot of energy. But the 40 is slamming that thing hard at 387. Much harder hit, and it's pushing a heavier round, a 155 grain. So this is gonna this is gonna bring up the story of well, I love my nine millimeter. I love my nine millimeter, and you should. It's it's a great round. Get the plus P rounds, get the double tap, get the good stuff, get the underwood, and, and the good quality ammunition. There's a new one called Atomic. I heard they make rain ammunition. But the bottom line is, the 40 caliber is something you do not want to overlook. Do not overlook the 40 caliber. It's more powerful. It's a shortened 10 millimeter. And I love the 10 millimeter. That's my favorite carry. And I also love the 40. So I just wanted to bring to your attention when a lot of you who buy shoulder holsters from me are all buying 999s. Don't forget the 40. There's nothing wrong with it. Just because the manufacturers are pushing nine millimeter down your throats, you need a quality gun to handle the 40. That's the key. And, and also, obviously, a 10 millimeter. You need a quality gun. I'm Tom from Weapons Education. Please thumb up the video. Please share it. Ring the bell so you get notifications. And I care about all of you through these tough times. And we have to get through it together. We're all American patriots. Thumb it up. Thank you so much. God bless all of you. Bye-bye.